Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's word. God is speaking. Today, I want to look at the book of Jonah. And I want us to look at the things that can happen when the root of our issue is pride. You know, a lot of things happen to us um, that we cause to happen. There are some things that happen just because we're in this world, but there are some things that take place, some things that we can see, signs that we have an issue that needs to be addressed. And oftentimes, the root of our issues is pride. So I want us to look at Jonah real quickly. I'm going to skim over the chapters because it is verses, I'm sorry, chapters 1 through four there's only four chapters and i'm just going to mention something in each of the chapters um, that we can just uh, meditate on you can go back later and just read these chapters it's a quick read but it's good principles in it but today i'm just looking at the root of jonah's problem his issue is pride and this can affect other people in our life it can affect us it can make us make wrong decisions get out of the will of god it can cause us um, to be uh, ungrateful and unthankful, um, just causes us to be selfish. It causes a lot of issues, problems, struggles, and battles, you know, for us and those around us. So first of all, we know in chapter one that God called no uh, Jonah and told him to go to Nineveh. He told him to go and uh, to, to speak to the people. You know, as you read through these chapters, you know that the people of Nineveh were in sin and God was going to destroy them and they were going to have a certain amount of time for them to repent, which was 40 days. Um, but as we look in the word of God, we see that Jonah decided that he didn't want to go. And so he began to go to Tarshish, which just was in the other direction. He, excuse me, I am at a stoplight. Um, but he um, decided that he was going to go in the opposite direction. He gets on a boat, uh, a ship to Tarshish. And the Bible lets us know that when he did this, that a great storm came about. And so when this storm came about, we know that it affected everyone on the ship except for Jonah because Jonah was asleep in the bottom of the ship. So we know that pride causes us to oppose God because for some reason we think that God can tell us to do something and we can decide that we're not going to do it. That we're going to go in the opposite direction, that we're going to try to run from the presence of the Lord. And this is pride in and of itself to think that we are greater than God, that we can escape his presence, and that we can decide to do whatever we want to do, even though he is God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords, our creator, the one who gave us breath and who can take the breath from us. So Jonah is operating in pride right now, and if we can examine our life and see that God has told us to do anything, and we've decided that we're going to do the opposite of it, when people are in ungodly relationships, dealing with you know, unforgiveness, refusing to forgive somebody, refusing to give up an addiction or a habit, allowing that to take first place in their life when we know that God is a jealous God. When he tells us that he instituted marriage, but uh, somebody decides that they want to fornicate, commit adultery, be in an ungodly, unequally yoked relationship when the word says no. So this is operating in pride anytime that we oppose God's instructions. And we need to have a clear understanding of that because why I'm going through this is because when you look in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, you know that God hates, he detests. Um, it says six things, then it says, yay, seven. You know, these are abomination to him. And the first one is a proud look. So pride is something that God hates. He detests it. And then the Bible also tells us that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So we want to look again in chapter uh, one of Jonah. Not only does he oppose God, but then the Bible tells us that he's asleep while everyone else is suffering. And this is what happens when you operate in pride is that you think of yourself and you don't consider the effect that it has on other people when you're in sin. Whether it's your family, your friends, your loved ones, strangers who are watching you, people that are, you know, in the presence, you know, that while you're going through your uh, situation of pride and disobedience and rebellion, that is causing other people around you to be affected or to stumble. And so by the time we get through this chapter one, we find that eventually the people end up throwing Jonah overboard. When he's thrown overboard from the ship, then the Bible tells us that um, the storm stops and there's a great fish that God had prepared for Jonah. The fish swallows Jonah up. Jonah is in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights in a dark place. He's in a, a, a depressed place, a place where he's alone. There's nobody he could talk to but God. There's no way for him to get out unless God lets him out. So when you know that you've called the situation in your rebellion and disobedience and when I say you I'm talking about all of us um 
and we find ourselves in a place that we don't want to be, all of a sudden, we want to call out to God, cry out to God, pray. Now we're, we, we can praise him. Now we want to get in his presence. Now we're sorry because we don't like the situation that we're in. And he, we know that he's the only one who can get us out. This is pride and thinking that we could just do what we want to do and just feel like at some point, you know, if it causes any problems or issues, we'll just call on God and he'll rescue us. Well, God did rescue him. By the time we get in chapter three, the Bible lets us know that at the end of chapter two, God lets the fish spit him out, vomit him out. And so he comes out and in, in chapter three, God gives him the word the second time and tells him to go to Nineveh. Well, now this time he goes because he didn't like the place that he was in. And oftentimes we only obey God because we find out that, you know, there's something that happened the last time we didn't. And we're, we're just not feeling like going back into that fish again. So, but the thing is, is that he goes to Nineveh and he preaches to Nineveh. He, Nineveh, he tells them the warning of God. And so now they are repenting. They are fasting. They are praying. They are, you know, surrendering to God. They listen. They hearken unto the voice. And so now because they repent, God decides that he's not going to destroy Nineveh after all. Hmm. Well, by the time you get in chapter four, you find out that Jonah's angry about this because he doesn't feel like they should have been forgiven. He said, that's why I didn't want to go. Because I know that you're a merciful God. I knew you were going to forgive him, basically. This is pride. When we think that God should be merciful to us. Now, let's remember that Jonah disobeyed God greatly in chapter 1. Caused the storm on other people while he was asleep. And then God causes him to get swallowed up in a fish but because he is praying and basically repenting and praising God God has mercy on him and lets him out of the fish but he thinks that these people shouldn't be forgiven and shouldn't be overlooked for their wickedness but they should you know have to suffer and he shouldn't have to preach to them this is pride when you think that God should bless you forgive you heal you deliver you but you think that somebody else is unworthy this is what happens when people don't want to forgive they don't want to forgive others for what they've done but they want to be forgiven of God for the things that they've done this is pride when you think that you know when we set ourselves up above someone else and think that we deserve what God has but someone else doesn't none of us deserve it that's what makes it his grace and his mercy it's pride so the Bible tells us that God causes a shade over Jonah. You know, this tree, this this shade comes over him, you know, to, to protect him from the heat, from the sun. Um, you know, and, and, you know, he never said thank you or anything like that. He's sitting under it. He gets the shade. He goes to sleep. He wakes up and the thing has shriveled, withered, and, and now it's gone. Now he's mad. What are you mad for? Um, you know, God lets him know you, you didn't you didn't plant that. You, you didn't grow that, but you got it and now it's gone and you're mad. You mad about a tree you didn't plant, but you don't care about people that couldn't be saved because they didn't have the wisdom, they didn't have the knowledge, the, they didn't know, you know, and, and so you would you you don't care about all the souls that were gonna be destroyed, but you care about a tree that withered away that you didn't even plant. Listen. This is pride. When we think about, you know, what about me and what what about my needs? What about what I want? You know, oh, well, you know, you didn't thank God for something, but now you're complaining because it's gone. You just felt like it was something that you should have had, but you really didn't deserve it. Um, but you don't care uh, about other people's basic needs. You don't care about people's salvation. How about the the fact that many people are saved? Um, many people have been delivered, snatched out of the fire, out of the enemy's hands, been empowered and enabled, given everlasting life, but doesn't care about going to preach to our brothers and sisters. And when I say brothers and sisters, I'm talking about those that are backslidden in the church. Don't care about going out into the world, into the dark places and ministering to those that have never known God, those that are destined for hell on the road to destruction. We feel like as long as God blesses us, people come to church and they want to be blessed. They want to hear a message that's going to tickle their ear, make them feel like God is going to give them a bunch of money, a big house and a car, um, going to heal their body, heal their family, bless their household, just us for and no more, but won't go out and preach to those that don't know any better, that have been blinded by the enemy, that are in the road to destruction, that are bound by generational curses and, and bound by strongholds. It's just like Jonah who didn't want to preach to them. He wanted his blessings. He wanted the grace and the mercy of God, but he didn't care about anybody else. Jesus told us to go preach the gospel to every creature. He told us to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Acts, Acts 1 and 8 tells us the Holy Ghost comes upon us that we would gain power to be witnesses. This is our call. We're to be ambassadors of Christ, like 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us. We're supposed to be representing Jesus Christ, witnessing to others. He came to seek and save the lost. If he abides in us and 
we abide in him if his word dwells in us richly we can't help but to go witness to others if we live by the spirit of god we can't help but care about other people's salvation and their deliverance in fact the word tells us to prefer others over ourselves and to look at the interests of others as well as our own in philippians chapter 2 so what is it that we're doing are we really loving god are we obeying him or are we humbled under his mighty hand that he will exalt us in due season or are we operating in pride where it's all about us and 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 we will oppose god if it's convenient for us to do so that we would oppose his word that we would not care about what it does to other people and overlook those that are lost that are bound that are unsaved that are headed for destruction will we just leave them there or are we going to go like Jesus told us to and go like God told Jonah to so I want us to review and look at ourselves, look at our walk. Many people at this time are thinking about what they're doing new for the new year and changes. But until we submit to God, nothing's going to change. People make up New Year's resolutions. But just because you say you're not going to drink or smoke anymore or cuss anymore, just because you say you're going to go on a diet, you're going to exercise. If you don't have the discipline to submit to God, you don't have the discipline to change. Because it's God who really changes us because he changes our hearts and our minds. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is changed by the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that hear this message today. I pray for each of us, Lord God, that we would submit to you, that we would humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We know you resist the proud. So we cast out and bind up every spirit of pride right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out in Jesus' name. I thank you right now, Father, that your, that your Holy Spirit is taking over in us, that we are submitted to you, committed to you, that we are led by the Spirit of God and we are sons and daughters of God. Father, I thank you for choosing us, saving us. Help us to be unselfish. Help us to deny ourselves. Take up the cross and follow Christ. Help us us to have the mind of Christ and help us to walk in his ways, Lord God, to walk in the light as the light, to be a vessel and an instrument of righteousness unto you. We thank you for what you've done in our lives to us, through us, and for us. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for who you are, all that you've done, and all that you're doing, and all that you're about to do. In the mighty, matchless, powerful name of Jesus, we pray and say hallelujah and amen. God bless you. I pray that God just continue to pour into you his word. I pray that you will share this message with somebody who will benefit from it. I pray that you share the gospel with somebody who doesn't know Christ. Minister to somebody who's in need. Lift out your hand to somebody who is down and be a vessel and an instrument unto God that he will be glorified and lifted up. I pray that you join us. We have a wild movement watchman on the wall. We are intercessors that stand in the gap. We pray Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. My name is Tony Brook Brown on Instagram Live, it's Pastor Tony Brown, or you can call the, fo the phone number underneath this YouTube video um, uh, under the where it talks about the, um, the morning prayer line. So I pray that you are blessed in the Lord. God bless you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications when I upload videos. And if you've already done so, God bless you. Welcome. I'm glad that we are connecting because God is bringing the body of Christ together as one to do his will, to do his work, and to be a light. God bless you, and I will see you next time.